Hey there YouTube, Tolstoy Kopkatsky here, making another return, regardless of whether you want me to or not, and I'm going to do another video review of uh, another half-breed console. Yes, I use the word half-breed console, I know how controversial that is, seeing as uh, I now have an uh, entire army of uh, Atari uh, fanboys uh, after me, trying to kill me. I'm getting about 13 calls a day. Regardless though, I'm a brave man, I'll continue to do my work, whether or not you like it, I don't care what you think about me. That's why we have YouTube, and not Hollywood. Anyway, here I have with me Sega's shot at uh, a 32-bit console, the Sega Saturn, which I found for about um, $40 on eBay, games and accessories included, which is quite a steal. Let's take a look at the console, first of all. She's kind of big, but um, not too big, certainly not bigger than an Xbox 360, and uh, it ain't the size that matters, it's, it's the heart on the inside. It's the heart on the inside, and you know what? This uh, this thing doesn't work off of uh, cartridges. This uh, was the first, uh, uh, well, I was going to say the first Sega console that works off of CDs, but I guess the Sega CD would be that then, wouldn't it? And um, there it is. Got your little drive right there, your little uh, laser reader in there. Very nice. We like CDs, we do. Um, got your power button. May heaven, Daniel. Feels nice and sturdy, and I love the way the reset button feels. Ah. Um... Feels pretty, uh, feels pretty good in the hands. Uh, here on this end, you can kind of see this little slot right here. This little um, cartridge slot. It actually just says cartridge input. Now, I was confused. I thought, hmm, when I first saw that, is this backwards compatible? Here I have with me Sonic 3 for the Sega Genesis, which, by the way, is one of my favorite games. I love the Sonic series, um, even when it went into 3D, although, as of late, I think they've completely raped the series. Anyway, you'd think it would be backwards compatible, but alas, it is not. Should you try to insert a thing, it will kind of go in there, but it really doesn't want to, and it's obviously not meant to. Um, this could be a slot for the 32X, I could have asked around, but you know what? When I make these reviews, I, I'm not looking to put raw facts into them, I'm looking to put my opinions in there, and uh, some anecdotes, and uh, you know what? Um, that's just my style. If you want information on this, look on Wikipedia, look on your uh, message boards, forget you, you know? Um, come back, you've got your uh, little hookups over here, and it's amazing that uh, unlike the Atari um, Jaguar, they're, they're not open circuitry, they're closed. They have closed little ports there, which uh, make it safe and less vulnerable to uh, dirt. Um, well, you know, uh, you got your, and over here, this is kind of interesting, you have your tempting little, um, whatever the hell it is, open door here, which if you pry off, You'll see a little hole in there. Inside you can see one of those little round mint-sized batteries, which I assume is actually for the internal memory, because this thing did have internal memory. Uh, I'm not sure if you could buy external memory. I just know that somehow it's managed to save some of my games, even though I don't have any sort of memory card. Well, that's about uh, it for the console. Anyway, uh, I guess what you need a console, what you need to go with the console to play is... Um, control pad, and uh, when I first saw this in the box, I was a mite bit worried, only because you got... It just looks really, really overcomplicated. I didn't know if this was a standard Sega control, uh, Saturn control pad with uh, all of its weird buttons. And, and this is actually just a turbo pad. It's like, a, you know, it's one of those, uh, it'll enhance your gameplay pad, which it really doesn't. I'm actually kind of glad that the gaming industry is kind of falling out of that um, phase, that fad, that, uh, you know, let's make a better... Anyway... This is what a standard one looks like, Mario Vignon. And, um, well, you know, kind of looks like a Genesis control pad. It's quite light, actually. Much, much lighter than a Genesis control pad. And this time it has shoulder buttons. I remember when I, the first time I saw triggers on a uh, control pad, I freaked right the, out. Um, you got your start button in the center, D-pad, sick buttons. Um, at the top, interestingly enough, you've got these top three buttons, little symbols hovering over them that are like repeat, uh, stop, pause, and play, and of course these two are labeled with a forward and backward, and um, we'll get into that in a moment, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I guess what you also need to play with your new shiny console are games. Um, it came with, uh, how many games? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lovely. Um, unfortunately most of them are sports titles. You have PGA Tour, whatever the hell it is. Um, Daytona USA. Okay. Virtua Fighter, two. Virtua Cop. Virtual cop. Virtua. The hell, I couldn't say virtual. And um, this is what, what the boxes actually look like if you get authentic. This is what I... It's kind of big and lunky, and it's um, real lacks kind of... lacks sex appeal. Um, but again, that's just me. 
Um, this here is uh, NFL Quarterback Club, 1996. The futuristic year of 96. Um, some baseball game, and of course, Michael Creighton's Congo, or Crichton, or however the hell you pronounce his name. Alright, well, that's enough introduction. Time that we demo the console, so it's time that we uh, don the gaming gloves and uh, dive into this review. See you in a moment. Alright, you're looking at my fuzzy Emerson again, and you can actually see some images in the background. Um, that's probably because it's actually set to channel 4, which is a hack channel on my TV, and um, that's a little off-putting, seeing as I've been putting this thing to channel 3 ever since, uh, well, I can remember. Let's boot on the system, then. You can hear me pressing the power button. This is what the um, boot-up screen looks like. It's um, fancy, it's sweet, and short, and to the point. Thank God. Hey, this is what your little boot-up menu looks like when you don't have a game disc immediately inserted. It's um, kind of primitive compared to your uh, you know, modern-day PS3, PSP, uh, Xbox 360 you know, uh, desktops and um, dashboards and such. But I'm sure it got the job done back in uh, you know, 1996. So here you got uh, your system settings like clock, language, memory manager, other settings. I wonder how many languages this thing came in. Let's see, English, Deutsch, Francais, Espanol, you know, the average stuff. Okay, um, what's probably interesting here is, uh, like I said, there are the symbols that are on the control pad you can see here now. You've got your uh, skip backwards, skip forwards, play, pause, stop, and repeat, and um, whatever the hell advanced controls is. So, this obviously leads one to uh, be tempted to insert a CD in there, which you can, actually, because this was one of the first consoles, I guess, that they thought, well, if it's going to be working off of CDs, we might as well give it the ability to read regular formatted, uh, wave formatted CDs. I have here uh, Beatles' Hard Day's Night album, and uh, I'm going to insert that for you, give you a little test, open it up. You see that uh, it's now labeled Drive Door Open, so this thing would tell you when the drive door is open, not that that really matters, but checking the disc format. Turning up the television set. Press and play. These days it's not that impressive, but I'm sure that would have amazed you back uh, when this console first came out. I remember when I first knew that the Sony PlayStation could do that, and I almost cracked myself. Anyway, enough about that. I'm going to go on to demo each one of the games for about five seconds, then I'll probably give my uh, finishing thoughts. Stand by.